sure uh, hello i'm rashid uh, and i'm shivai and first of all sorry for keeping you waiting because uh, we have just been juggling around today with a bunch of talks so i hope uh, you're able to gain uh, from today's talk yeah no so in the next 30 minutes we'll be talking about prometheus in the ml ops life cycle uh, we want to talk about a bit about things that have worked for us using prometheus uh, both of us have been working closely with machine learning things that have worked for us and uh, uh, that, that's what uh, some of the things we'll talk about monitoring especially in the context of machine learning so um, i'm rishit uh, i'm a student at the university of toronto and hi i'm shivai i'm a contributor and uh, maintainer at layer 5 which is a service mesh community okay so uh, when we are talking about monitoring uh, the the traditional software monitoring um, um, i a lot of you might know about monitoring in software or you might have done it a lot earlier using prometheus or maybe some other tool but if you don't uh, usually uh, monitoring uh, in the context of software uh, in includes that you Uh, think about SLOs. Monitor, uh, monitor if your SLOs are being met. Uh, monitor system failures and so on. There, there is a lot of things that monitoring means. And if we talk in the perspective of machine learning, right? Because today's talk is all about MLOps. Uh, so if you take a look at this diagram for the MLOps or the machine learning lifecycle, uh, there are of course multiple steps, right? From getting your input data and cleaning it up, and then using that data to train your machine learning model, and going ahead and uh, evaluating your model, testing your model, and then finally productionizing it. And post the productionizing of a model, you are also looking at uh, looking to always test your model from time to time to ensure. that uh, the model performance does not degrade as the model is being used in production and uh, post deployment you are also continuously monitoring the model and all of these are steps that are part of the mlops life cycle and that's where uh, specifically when when it comes to from uh, the monitoring and observability side of things we'll see how prometheus plays a really key role Uh, so we uh, so we want to talk about monitoring in the context of ml so i would you like to uh, talk a bit about that sure so uh, if we take a look at the most important use cases as i mentioned that once you uh, productionize your model uh, there are a lot of hidden variables that might prop up because uh, when you are working with uh, the production data there might be cases where uh, you might run into edge cases where the model does not perform uh, then over time there is also a possibility that the data distribution on the basis of which originally your model was trained on that might shift and there are, we'll basically just will be explaining two different ways in terms of the time and in terms of the data drift so we have particularly two terms that if you are in the ml uh, ecosystem uh, concept drift and data drift are a couple of items that you'll come across from time to time and there could be situations where a uh, model might not be configured properly uh so the idea is that model will still make a prediction but of course it's not uh always going to be making a good prediction so that's what we are also trying to monitor from time to time that the prediction uh does not go uh, like the prediction rate uh, does not go down so uh so, uh, so two things i particularly want to mention is the aspect of different challenges uh the monitoring in context of machine learning and what we want is pretty different from how you might have been using prometheus earlier uh so so these are the different challenges i particularly want to highlight on and uh, uh, so the ideas are a bit different here what we want to achieve is a bit different than traditional software and uh, uh, i also want to highlight that the system goes through properly there is no error as such uh you you don't have any system failure you don't have any slo failure nothing at all the model still makes a prediction but you are still doing something wrong it could be you are still doing something wrong the model does not make sensible predictions so this is also a very interesting use case everything works perfectly there is no error but you still need to be able to monitor in those situations so uh, so, so the ideas are a bit different here uh, in context to uh, in context to software Uh, so what we want to do is uh, not just uh, so not just monitor system metrics and resource metrics which we already do we introduce a third term over here called model metrics uh, which is trying to figure out all of this the model still uh, the model still giving you predictions there is no error but you have to figure out something make monitoring work just by getting the model metrics so that is what uh, we want to do and uh, 
yeah i'm uh, in this presentation also we'll particularly be stressing on model matrix part because system matrix resource matrix you might have been uh, doing that since since uh, since a long time or some other talks even before us uh, some other talks even before us uh, do cover this so uh, we want to talk more about the context of ml uh, so we have uh, so so we have more uh, in this presentation we'll talk about monitoring uh, model matrix so uh, so so two of the main things we want to monitor uh, and i just to give uh, set you context or give you an example of why uh, you might still want to monitor if your system works well there is no error uh, so it could happen that environment changes affect the model so uh, for example uh, yeah, yeah, uh, there could just be a different environment from when you had created a model and now when you are deploying the model the uh, environmental variables are all different in that case your model works well uh, it, your model works but it does not work as you expected it to be it does not give you the right predictions there could also be a change in data distribution so the idea of uh, the so the thing we want to do with prometheus in the ml of life cycle is uh, have a model uh, trained on some data and then apply it uh, uh, and then uh, make predictions from it uh, uh, now a lot of uh, you might tell me that's not exactly what we want to do that's a very simplified way of saying it you would also iterate your model and do all that but let's just stick with the simplified definition for right now and uh, um, one thing that could majorly go wrong and still have your model work but we want to get that edge case in our monitoring aspect uh, is that uh, the data distribution on which you trained your model is different from the data distribution on which your model is working so uh so, uh so so think of it as the data on which your model is making predictions should be in the same distribution or is, should be in the same likelihood of distribution as your original data and there are multiple mathematical models to measure this uh, uh multiple ways you can do this uh, and we'll not go into the machine learning specific aspects in this talk uh, but uh, th these are two ways uh, 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 very popularly known as concept drift and data drift so we also want to monitor these we are, we'll think of them as edge cases uh, we uh, we still want to monitor all of this so, so can you talk a bit about how prometheus comes into play sure so this is where like you know we are talking about prometheus so so far what we saw is by, was that the system matrix is something that probably was already covered in some of the earlier talks and some of you who might be prometheus users might be already doing that so uh, this is a quick sample of how you could potentially use prometheus because it's one of the most uh, promising uh, like you know tools to be able to monitor your model performance and also the model health so you can use a combination of both prometheus and grafana and that's what we're going to be showing in today's demo as well so primarily what we are doing is that prometheus will allow you to scrape your data so even if you are having a time series uh, database um, or time series data that that's what you'll be able to capture with the help of prometheus and then uh, you'll you'll be able to see the prometheus logs and using that at least you'll be able to see how does the model uh, performance vary over time and that will give you some insights to understand whether the perform uh, whether the performance of a model is actually uh, degrading over time as you kind of analyze these logs uh, that you get from prometheus and of of course over that you can uh, put in some alerts with pager duty or email and then you can also go ahead and uh, view them on a grafana dashboard that we'll be also covering in today's demonstration so it makes it easy for as a data scientist or as an ml ops engineer to integrate uh, prometheus to see how the model performance works over time especially because we might have some edge cases that might not be considered when deploying the model initially so as part of the model serving process uh, it plays a really important hand uh, in determining how and what changes will you be making inside of your model post uh, going into production great so next up uh, uh, we'll actually oh uh, let's go one slide back and uh, next up we'll actually take a look at two demos and we'll get uh, more context for these demos uh, so uh, so we'll try to show how how you, how do you do this different kind of monitoring or monitoring in a different context like we talked about monitor all the aspects that we talked about uh, so shivai would you like to start out with a demo of uh, showing prometheus on selden sir sure, sir sure. let me just quickly connect
All right. So this is a quick introduction about Selden itself. So Selden is a bunch of tools provided to you. It's an open source tool uh, specifically for uh, model serving, model performance, model, model monitoring, model uh, deployment. So it works very closely with Kubeflow. So you can definitely check it out. But what we are going to be covering is uh, the demonstration for uh, how you can use Prometheus. So it's going to be a little difficult for me to kind of stretch to go to the screen. Or uh, let me actually try to monitor. Let me try to just go ahead and um, mirror my screen just once again. This now should be better. Yeah, perfect. So um, what we're going to be covering is an example for being able to view the Prometheus metrics with the help of uh, Selden. So uh, some of the prerequisites that you'll require in case you also want to use that you have to install the Selden core. Uh, so for that, you need probably a Kubernetes cluster. You can use Kind if you're running it locally, or you can also use services like Sivo or Jiki or any other cloud provider to just have a Kubernetes cluster running. So in my case, um, and I'll just open up my terminal as well. So in my case, I have, um, and let me just quickly show you my cube config. So I'll just go to my dot cube. All right. So if you're able to see that uh, right now I'm running my uh, Kubernetes cluster, it's a GK cluster. So it's running on Google Cloud. And uh, what I've done is that I've already configured my, and I'll just quickly show you my Kubectl pods as well. So let me just go ahead and do that. While he does that, uh, what's the right way to say kubectl? Uh, any, anyone wants to go first? I say it as kubectl. Uh, if, if you say it another way, please don't hate me or hate Shivai. <laughs> Go on, Shivai. Yeah. So as you can see that uh, currently I have a number of different services that are pre-configured in my Kubectl. Uh, I, I hope that uh, everyone is able to see the screen, right? Yeah. So you can see that I have, uh, of course, Istio because Istio gateway is used for monitoring and uh, monitoring and kind of like looking at all the traffic that is going on. So we have an Istio gateway. And apart from that, uh, we have a bunch of Selden related, uh, like, you know, uh, pods that are running. So we have the core Selden and then we have a few monitoring ones as well. So these are essentially what is running. So we have a Selden Prometheus operator. So if you want to go ahead and run any particular command and run any machine learning model, uh, you can use the Prometheus operator to that works on top of Selden to monitor all your requests and you, you're able to see that in a dashboard. So since I already have my monitoring uh, running, you can see that uh, this is my uh, dashboard, mon uh, Prometheus uh, dashboard. And over here, uh, so far, I've just run a few sample requests. So the idea is that um, if you follow along this documentation, and we'll share the link for this documentation, um, first we are just setting up Selden core, and then we install the Prometheus operator, and we set it up with, with Selden. And once uh, we basically do that, then what we're going ahead and doing is that we are just deploying this example model that you can see. It's just a simple uh, model that echoes, um, and you can kind of then see the results as we will run this. And uh, as you go ahead and check this particular uh, docs out, um, you'll see that how as you, uh, like let's say from time to time you run your machine learning model, you'll see the changes coming in this live uh, time series uh, data. So over here, I already have uh, one of my windows open. And I have a curl request that is heading to my endpoint, which is running on localhost 8003. So I've used port forwarding to kind of run it locally, and you'll be able to see it uh, in that GKE cluster as well. So as I run this, um, you see that um, it ran it successfully. Oh, OK. Um, and now let's take a look at our Prometheus dashboard. So let me just quickly refresh this. So as you can see that we have now a new uh, request that has come up uh, as compared to the last time. So we were up to 12 requests and now we have the 14 requests. So this way what you can do is that, um, of course, since we are uh, using, like, you know, uh, you can put in any query into your Prometheus dashboard to kind of then also monitor uh, to get a summary version. Uh, in this case, what I'm doing is that I'm looking at on a per uh, second request basis that how is my model uh, working, right? So how many requests have been sent so far? 
but you can also create your custom uh, dashboards as well to kind of monitor uh, the actual live prediction rates that, that, that are going on for a particular model. In this case, the example that we showed is a simple model, but you can run it on any model that you would want, uh, sklearn, TensorFlow, PyTorch-based models. And this we can uh, monitor your live machine learning performance uh, on, uh, on the Prometheus dashboard. And you can further expand this, uh, expand this by also uh, like, you know, going ahead and creating a Grafana dashboard to kind of monitor your logs. Uh, that we'll be seeing in the fast API demo that Trishit will be showing to all of you. But yes, um, apart from this, I also wanted to quickly showcase another one. So um, how many of you are aware of machine learning pipelines or might have heard about this term ML pipelines? Anyone has previously probably heard of Kubeflow? Um, so there, there are a number of different data orchestration platforms like Kubeflow, Flight, and uh, which allow you to basically take your entire MLOps cycle and then convert them into specific workflows. So you can think of like, let's say the model training as a separate workflow. Uh, you can have your model uh, testing and model uh, deployment as specific workflows, right? So you can be, you're basically dividing them into various tasks. So uh, another example that uh, I would just want to quickly showcase is uh, with the um, Flight. So over here, um, uh, basically, let me go back over here to the docs section. So, um, and I'll just quickly search for Prometheus. So as we showed uh, an example for Selden, if you were like, let's say, uh, using uh, Flight for an example for being able to run your workflows, machine learning workflows. So Prometheus uh, is directly in embedded into your machine learning workflows with Flight. So you get metrics out of the box. And then you'll find that there are some published dashboards uh, to monitor the flight deployments. Uh, again, this is related to your MLOps with the help of flight by using the flight workflows. So you can take a look at uh, this as well. And again, we'll be more than happy to share some examples. But what, what we just want to showcase through these examples is that um, today, like Prometheus plays an extremely important role in the MLOps lifecycle. So if you're looking to embed that, uh, you have a number of different integrations out of the box that you can set up locally in your systems and uh, start to monitor the performance. And we'll also see an example for a native fast API that Prashit will be showing you to, to all of you. Okay, so I'll show another demo. And uh, yep, let me get set up. I think it's up now. Yes, yeah. it is. So uh, now we'll take a look at a fast API demo. And uh, the, the idea of these demos is actually to show two very, very popular ways of deploying machine learning, uh, uh, of deploying machine learning or doing MLOps. And uh, we just want to show you how we have integrated Prometheus into that. Uh, uh, but again, uh, you're not limited to what we, of course, show in the demo. You can work it, make it work with other platforms. We just want to share how we have done it with these platforms and apply these ideas to other platforms. So we will take a look at fast API, which is probably one of the most popular ways to deploy a machine learning model as well. And uh, so, so setting some context for this demo, what we want to do is create a REST service to expose the model, not something we'll be doing in this talk. Uh, let's just say it's been done for us. Uh, what uh, next we want to do is instrument the server to collect the metrics, which might probably be exposed by a, se a separate metrics endpoint um, uh, fr from the REST API we have created for our model. And we'll use the Prometheus Fast API instrumentator, um, uh, which allows us to uh, which allows us to collect metrics uh, from uh, from a Fast API deployment. Uh, what we'll also be showing will be uh, how to uh, how to show uh, the data distribution your model is right now working under the data distribution the model was trained on. So essentially, all the aspects which we just covered in the slides. So we'll also be showing that, and. Uh, uh, then, of course, we want to use uh, Prometheus to collect and store metrics. And uh, we'll just add uh, a layer of Grafana to visualize the collected metrics, not something uh, we'll focus a lot on in this talk. talk but uh, uh, yeah, we do have the code for that, and we'll just be showing it. Uh, and uh, if you want to try this out for yourself, so especially some of the things uh, like data distribution. What data distribution uh, does your model operate under? It's pretty hard to see with a single request. 
so we also have some code. Uh, I've actually been so it's actually uh, so I've I've been running some code since morning, to uh, which is essentially using Locus uh, to simulate requests. Uh, hundreds of requests it is it has been simulating since the morning. Uh, so that will also allow us to kind of see uh, so some of the other aspects of machine learning in action, which we uh, which we particularly wanted to see with this talk, uh, which we particularly wanted to show with this talk. Sorry, no, uh, not thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's go to the demo. Yes, not yet. Great. So uh, let's start with the model. Uh, we don't want to talk a lot about the model, but we'll start with the model and then work our way up. Uh, I'll directly start with the Docker file. Uh, I have uh, I have a fast API deployment up, and uh, I also have a model up. My model is trained, uh, I, and I, I and I have a Docker file up to uh, to make an image out of it, and uh, uh, and and now I'll be using this fast API deployment. Uh, so. Oh, because we don't really want to talk about training a model and all that in the demo, so yeah. Uh, then I uh, so then what I want to talk about is the dash. Uh, uh, then what I want to talk about is the model.yaml file. We have a deployment here uh, which uh, which uh, makes a REST API uh, for our model, uh, which is uh, pretty standard. And we also have a service here. Uh, the service allows us to uh, expose the REST API and then use it. So uh, uh, those are uh, two of the things we are doing. And then we also have a service monitor. So uh, 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 so of course this must be the service monitor should be in the same space that Prom uh, namespace that Prometheus is running. So Prometheus can automatically get get and collect the data from it. Uh, so uh, that is uh, what we'll be. Um, uh, so that is another uh, uh, service. Another so another uh, resource we have, uh, we'll also deploy a service monitor. So okay, uh, where are these three resources deployed? So uh, uh, now, of course, you can use something else. I'm just using Sivo uh, because I've been using it. Um, so I, I've deployed, I've made a Kubernetes cluster, deployed the resources I talked about, the REST API, uh, uh, a, a service monitor, and a service. I've deployed all of that on this Sivo cluster. Uh, of course, you can use whatever cloud you like, but just for this demo, we'll be using Sivo. So, with that, uh, let's go full screen. And uh, okay, so we have our model.yaml file, and then we uh, actually have the dashboard itself. So, so, so some of the things we'll be doing in the dashboard to uh, make sense of the data given to us by Prometheus, uh, for example, is uh, identifying uh, what. I identifying what distributions each data falls falls under, and to do this, we'll actually use uh, and we'll actually leverage some of the functionality by Grafana to do this, and um, uh, which is pretty simple. You are making a heat map out of it, and then you can simply see uh, and you can then simply compare it with the original distribution the model was trained on. So uh, these are um, so this is one of the things that uh, that, uh, that we are doing uh, on on our Grafana dashboard. Uh, so, uh, with that, now we have set up. Uh, now we have set up a REST API deployment for our model. We also have a service monitor, and uh, uh, we, we, I've already deployed Prometheus. Uh, I'm using Prometheus stack here, so I've already deployed Prometheus uh, for us in the cluster. Uh, uh, all of this is pretty intuitive uh, uh, up until now. At least the deployment part, the part which was in, I just showed that on the screen, but. Uh, uh, at least deploying all of these is pretty intuitive. Uh, so, uh, so that's what we have done until now. Uh, uh, we have also uh, uh, created a dashboard uh, uh, using the model.json, which is uh, which is what Grafana will be using uh, to make sense out of the metrics collected by uh, Pro uh, Prometheus. So, I already have. Uh, so, I'm just forwarding port here uh, uh, to. Uh, to uh, uh, to get the Grafana dashboard, and uh, let's actually take a look at the Grafana dashboard. I particularly want to see one of the demos. Uh, this is a uh, all of this is by the way open source, uh, so you can feel free to try out everything, see how we have implemented other things. But right now, uh, the part which I talked about, which distributions are the requests under, uh, is something we'll be uh, showing. But we also have some other things which we'll show in the Grafana dashboard, but not go 
into everything right now uh, due to time. Uh, so an another thing uh, before, uh, so we have deployed all of this until now. What we have also deployed just to better understand uh, is locusts. Uh, so let's close this and let's open our load test. So we actually have a locust file, uh, uh, which is uh, which is another uh, which is another pod we are running to make continuous uh, pre uh, to make continuous requests. Uh, so we can just understand and see and see some data on the Grafana dashboard. See the heat map being made for different distributions. So uh, that's what we have until now. And let's actually go to our Grafana dashboard, which uh, which I was talking about. And uh, uh, you can actually see requests have been coming in since quite some while. It's actually on since morning. And uh, uh, th th this shows what the uh, model score is, especially the model prediction distribution. All of these are like random requests I'm sending. So I can see the different bins, uh, uh, all of the, uh, the data is in. Uh, I can see the different bins the model has been predicting uh, the data is in. So. Uh, as we were talking about in the slides, this is something pretty useful for machine learning use cases, uh, which is why we want to see it. Uh, so, so some of the other things we, uh, so this is of course uh, what we would call the model metrics. And uh, then we also have the service. Uh, so in the model metrics, we are also showing model score. Um, so model score is, um, uh, so the model score is essentially a way to uh, say how good my model is performing, get an estimate of it. Of course, we haven't seen the data earlier or trained on it, uh, but it at least allows the model score at least allows us to get an estimate of how this works. We won't be going into the mathematical models right now. Uh, we just saw it for model prediction distribution, but uh, uh, all of this is open source. You can take a look at it. Uh, okay, so with that, uh, so those are the model metrics. We have also uh, 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 we have also monitored uh, service metrics and uh, uh, resource metrics, uh, which are pre uh, pretty straightforward. So I'll not talk a lot about them. Uh, but uh, with that, uh, I but with that demo, I come to the end of my talk. And this time for real, thank you. And And just to kind of summarize one last point is that uh, you can use Prometheus as a very effective tool in all the different life formats of uh, during especially the time when you're training model and then post the training when you have put into production to view the live metrics and then of course monitor the overall health of your uh, machine learning models. So yeah, I mean, if you have any questions, we'll love to answer them now. Yeah. If not right now, then you can always find both of us on Twitter. And uh, thank you.